Hello everyone, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tavua. We love Today FM in Tavua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Hola, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, businesses accused of defrauding the government. Youngsters warned about human rights violation. And Kandavu worried about non-savings by a young generation. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. It has been found that prominent accounting firms in the country are involved with certain businesses in helping them to defraud the government. This was revealed by the Fiji Revenue and Customs Service Chief Executive Viswanath Das, who was speaking during the Fiji Institute of Accountants Symposium in Suva this afternoon. Certain businesses are alleged to have sought the services of accountants to prepare their financial books in a way that does not reflect their taxes in the right manner. Of course, you know, you advise the client and then the client chooses to go away from you because, you know, there's someone else willing to do it. But I think I would say in the tax office and your tax agent relationship, I think it would be really nice if you could or you should as, as your professional conduct, you know, I think you should inform us. Viswanath Das says they know of some accountants who have turned away such businesses, but there are many who remain involved in such practices. So, you know, I'd just like to send a message. We are very serious about compliance. First and foremost, we are willing to work with you. If you are not coming on board, uh, then you have to be ready to face the uh, more difficult phase of the Fiji Revenue and Customs Service. Attorney General Ayas Sayed Khayyum reminded the businesses that Fiji has one of the lowest tax rate in the region. Recently there's one accounting firm, apparently one of their clients was given some penalties. Uh, they had to pay it over a period of time. I think they made some arrangement with FRCS. And then when they're making their monthly installments, uh, that's not something that you can claim, right? The penalties. But the accounting firm decided to be very creative about it and showed it as something that they are purchasing. Individuals and companies who are found guilty of defrauding the government can face up to $10,000 fine or jail term. Sharin Shivan, FBC News. The young generation in the country have been urged to refrain from engaging themselves in posts and videos circulating on social media that could lead to the violation of a person's human rights. The call was made after a video of a man who was allegedly mentally challenged was uploaded online and shared a number of times, attracting negative comments from the public. Kelly Vadala reports. This open dialogue session with youths from different backgrounds was aimed to educate them on the importance of human rights. The video came to my knowledge of a young person uh, who has mental disability was walking around naked in, in the silver market and, and people were nudging him. Then we proceeded to post it on the social media, followed by a whole bunch of remarks that, you know, were nothing short of hate speech. Over 50 youth activists who took part in the dialogue welcomed the session, saying it gave them a clear direction on how they can educate others on access to justice and human rights provisions. There are a lot of young people out there that do not understand the basic human rights. It safeguards us, it's a, like a guideline for everybody. Human rights is a broad term for me, however, for, uh, as an individual, education is important. Thank you so much the dialogue session was organized with the support of the European Union and the United Nations Development. Human Rights and Anti-Discrimination Commission Director Ashwin Raj says human rights are important in the relationship that exists between individuals and the government that has power over them. He says the state needs to look after the basic needs of people and protect some of their freedoms. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. The youth of Kandavu lack the basic knowledge to manage their income, which may affect them in years to come. The members of the Kandavu Provincial Council say it is a serious matter and have proposed that financial literacy training is important for the young people in the villages. Savada Thambu reports. Financial literacy top discussions during the Kandavu Provincial Council meeting in Suva today. Many youths in the village are engaged in Angona and Dalo farming, which brings them a lot of income. I've just gathered uh, one of the uh, data from uh, just one postal agency 
which is um, a station that uh, Unisa government station. And uh, from that uh, postal agency, the record is that uh, every month, uh, 1.5 million, uh, 1 to 1.5 million is the amount of money that uh, goes throughout the island. Some villagers travel to the city to sell their produce, others wait for the agents on the island. Permanent Secretary for Itauki Affairs, Naipote Katoni Tambo says, villagers must learn to save. Many are just uh, receiving their cash and come to Suva and uh, returning back with no funds. Eh? Some are buying alcohol uh, to the villages. And also, maybe there are some social problems that are being created. The council members have suggested that the financial literacy workshop should be conducted before Christmas. According to Katoni Tamboy, a request will be made to the Reserve Bank on how people on the island can be assisted. Sabaira Tamboa, FBC News. Police are investigating a case whereby a 30-seater bus caught fire at the roundabout near the Nalsori Bridge. Around 20 people were traveling in the bus at the time of the incident, but they all escaped unharmed. Fire officers from the fire authority were able to assist the passengers out of the bus before putting the fire out. Police and NFA are investigating the cause of the fire. Fijians planning to travel to Europe may have to go to Vanuatu to apply for their respective visas from next year. With the French Embassy announcing a downsizing by 2018, their visa services is also expected to be closed. It is unclear at this stage whether an alternative will be found in Fiji to process applications like the Schengen visa for European states, which requires biometrics. There are a number of Fijians living and working in France, majority of whom are employed as rugby players. Other than Fiji, the French embassy also caters for citizens of Kiribati, Nauru, Tonga and Tuvalu. Roadworks along the Queen Elizabeth Drive in Suva has been delayed due to bad weather over the past few days. The rehabilitation on this stretch of road was initially scheduled to be completed by September 1st. Pranita Prakash reports. The Fiji Roads Authority says continuous rainy weather has affected their work. We have a few few days, a uh, bit of bad weather in Suva, rainy. So, you know, one day of rain um, delays a few days of the project work, but the contractors are working um, uh, in the night to, to cover up that these rainy uh, uh, days that they have lost. Uh, we should be able to get this um, uh, project um, completed very soon. Robert Sen did not say how long the delay will be for, but has urged motorists to use the detour. We'll try to see uh, when we can open it up, but at this stage um, it still be closed. Uh, we are looking at from week by week, so um, see how fast the contractors um, can uh, complete the work, uh, depending on the weather, uh, which is not uh, very favorable currently. The public is frustrated with this delay. A lot of uh, inconvenience because it's taking too long. It causes inconvenience and also it causes a lot of traffic jams. For the taxi drivers and the car drivers, we've got a long way to go around again instead of just go to the car, uh, I mean to go straight away and to the place where we are going. The project includes the construction of footpaths, pavement, improving the drainage, as well as the installation of street lights. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Still to come, new World Bank office to enhance Pacific relationship and cancer patient shares experience. That's coming up. Bula! Bula FM, number 2 and seri. The new World Bank office in Suva will ensure continued partnership with Fiji and the Pacific region. The Prime Minister today signed an official World Bank establishment agreement in Suva. Akusita Tale reports. The World Bank joins many other international organizations to establish its regional office in Fiji, which in turn augurs well for the Pacific Island countries. Being based in Fiji will assist the World Bank to understand the challenges and issues faced by Pacific Island countries, which will enable the World Bank to develop programs that better address these issues and in the long run 
will benefit the vulnerable communities of Fiji and the Pacific. The World Bank Group is one of the largest donors for developing countries. Work will be a lot easier as resources will be available right here at home. We're also tapping into Fiji's growing leadership in the region as a regional leader uh, to be, make this the basis for our support to other countries in the South Pacific. The International Financial Corporation, a member of the group that focuses exclusively on the private sector in developing countries, has welcomed this. What we're really excited about in this partnership with Fiji is the private sector and really is an engine for growth in Fiji. Most of the jobs recently created in Fiji have come through the private sector and with IFC having a stronger presence here, working closely with our bank colleagues, we really intend to scale up our operations. The new regional office is expected to open at the new FNPF Plaza by next year. Akusita Tali, FBC News. What would you do if you were given a timeline for your death? This is, this is the story of cancer victim Vika Fong Toy, who has been told she only has one year to live. Ropata Valime has more. And I said, okay, what am I going to do? Cancer survivor Vika Fong Toy says she was angry after she came to learn that she has stage 4 kidney cancer. I realized now I can't do anything. So we were there for about half an hour. Of course, when we left for our apartment, we were really, really shocked. She says the short span of time she has, it's all about ensuring she lives it to the fullest. People go without saying goodbye. Um, here I am probably now moving at a slower pace in life, doing things that I wanted to do like cooking. Um, my whole family cooks except me. Um, you know, trying to learn how to bake at 46. The Bushel's biggest morning tea, organized by Motibai Nandi, brings together business houses and cancer survivors to tell their journey. Divisional Medical Officer West, Dr. Susanna Kaliev says high death rate from cancer is due to very late detection through screening. A challenging issue we also noted in the ministry is the emotional fear most of the women go through when they are informed about the outcome of their screening. And this also hinders them from accessing early treatment. Morty by a group of companies public relation manager Shalendra Prasad says the morning tea plays important role in cancer advocacy. The event raises $7,000. Ropate Valime, FBC News. An application for no case to answer has been filed by the Defence Council in the alleged sedition case involving 16 people of Ra. The oral submission was made yesterday following the formal closure of the prosecution's case. During the trial yesterday, a video of Merione Kerwin was played in the Lautoka High Court. Kerwin is believed to be the author of the so-called Ra Christian State Constitution, the Lunda Declaration and the petition to the International Court of Justice in England. In the video, it was proposed that each province in Fiji should have its own states, the same as the proposed Ra Christian Sovereign State. The judge will make a ruling on the application tomorrow. An art exhibition for primary school students is underway at the International School in Suva and aims to help them better understand the different issues facing the world today. The International Primary Years program encourages students to become active and compassionate to help create a better living environment. Vilimaina Nangelevuki has more. The exhibition gives students the chance to choose from a range of topics which will help them become lifelong learners and understand the differences between unique cultures around the world. They're doing an independent project of their choosing and it combines elements of arts, um, English, so language and mathematics and social studies. And so it, it means a lot to the kids. They learn so much to have an independent inquiry and it really helps them grow. The students conducted their own independent research on both local and global issues. Uh, my exhibition is about the Solomon Islands and uh, I chose this topic because I didn't, know, I didn't know anything about the Solomon Islands with their communication. I chose to do this because I know a lot about other island dances but I haven't really ever learned about Samoan dance. So I figured that this would be a good time to do it and to showcase my work as well. I research on graffiti. <clears throat> um, and the reason I chose this topic, or focus, is because um, uh, graffiti and street art put a lot of color into the streets. 
probably not that much in Fiji, but a lot in Australia. For these Year 5 students, the primary year's program exhibition will help them enhance their skills and knowledge on countries around the world. Vili Mai Nanangelevuki, FBC News. Ahead in sports with Jamie, Fiji rugby under 20 side wins its first match, but up next is Rachel with business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up in business tonight. Fuel stations record 75% decrease in plastic bag use. And in growing Fiji, drainage work to ease flooding in Navua town area. Stay with us. I'm Anare Sorbokoro of Nayabu when Whenever I want to tune in to listen to great music, I always tune in to my favorite radio station, Gold FM, only the classic. My name is Lita. We love listening to Gold FM here at the Fiji Hideaway Resort and Spa. Gold FM, only the classic hits. We here at Tano Waterfront Lotoka love listening to Gold FM, only, only the, the classic, classic hits. hits. Gold FM. Welcome back. Leading business tonight, a 75% decrease in plastic bag usage has been recorded by fuel service stations around the country. This is the first 15 days since the 10% plastic bag levy came into effect on the 1st of August. The Fiji Fuel Retailers Association representative Melba Lala says service stations have trained their employees to encourage their drivers to use plastic bags or use reusable bags. At the rate that we are going, we are expected to surpass our challenge to reduce one million plastic bags in the first six months. Thus, our pledge to all our drivers and our walk-in customers uh, to go without plastic bags at all our fuel service station convenience store. And we now join Savanada from HFC Bank with the latest on the currency markets. Good evening. Let's take a look at the performance of our basket of currencies of which our Fijian dollar is pegged against. North Korea's launch on Tuesday of a ballistic missile over Japan's northern island had initially spooked investors, triggering a drop in the U.S. bond yields and a slide in the dollar versus the yen. However, as tensions ease for now, the U.S. dollar has gained strength from yesterday and the Japanese yen has weakened. As risk appetite increases, investors are flocking back to the U.S. dollar from safe havens such as gold, resulting in its price decrease. The U.S. dollar opened six points stronger today at 0 0.4851. A good day for those exchanging their U.S. dollar currency notes against Fijian dollars. That's the news in the market right now. Vinaka. Thanks, Avanada. Looking at today's exchange rates and foreign currencies in the Fijian dollar. The Fijian dollar weakened against the Chinese yuan and the American dollar to close at 321, while it strengthened against the American dollar to close at 48 cents. Closer to home, the Australian dollar weakened to close at 60 cents, and the New Zealand dollar weakened to close at 66 cents, and the PNG Kina strengthened to close at 136. As for the commodities market, or there was a decline in the commodities as oil prices were down to close at 46.27 a barrel. Gold closed at 1,308 and silver closed at 17.38 an ounce. And in Growing Fiji tonight, people living in flood-prone residential and farming areas along Navua now have improved water channels. Responding to requests from residents living in these areas, the Fiji Roads Authority carried out repair works. Improvement works included clearing of overgrown vegetation and split from the water channels and carrying out maintenance work on the roadside drains. Clearing of these drains will help improve the water flow and reduce some of the overflow often experienced during intensive rainfall. And that's business this evening. Now to the latest in sports. Here's Jamie. Thanks, Rachel, and good evening. Coming up, Fiji and Rua departs with high hopes. And Fiji football expects tough challenge against Indonesia. This and more after the break. Hey Pramila, why are you here? 
सुबह मेरी आँख खुलती है तो मैं मिर्ची एफ सुनती हूँ मिर्ची एफ एम इज नंबर वन इट सो हॉट हम लोग बार टाउन के केरियर ड्राइवर लोगो ने हम लोग के मिर्ची एफ एम सुनो अच्छा लगे मिर्ची एफ एम इज हॉट हाय मैं संध्या नारिया रेफ्रिटी से मेरे सारे दोस्त मिर्ची एफ एम सुनते हैं मिर्ची एफ एम हॉट आई लव मिर्ची हम एसबीन टॉकर ताबू आ के मिर्ची एफ एम में सबसे अच्छा गाना बजे मिर्ची एफ एम इट्स हॉट The Fiji Airways Ndrua left today for its first appearance in Australia's National Rugby Championship. While the side, made up of local players, accepts that the level of competition will be tough, the aim is to lift personal standards while targeting a win with each encounter. Rohit Deo has more. The excitement on the faces of these individuals, a clear indication they are raring to go for the start of the NRC competition. We take uh, each game as it comes. but. Uh for us, we are not there to make the numbers. We want to win, uh, win games also. The team goes into the competition as underdogs, knowing they will be up against professional teams, but do get another chance to prove what Fijian rugby is all about. We need uh, to lift uh, our standard, our, uh, the local players. So that's one uh, goal that I want to achieve. Uh, so playing against uh, Mans, those are super rugby players. So that's a new learning experience for them. Captain John Stewart is aware of the tough road ahead, but has faith in his team. It's more different level to skipper and fair brother compared to what we're gonna go and do, uh, meet against other professional teams. The only way we can do that is to train hard and be fit, so that we can conquer it, and our mind can really work. The opposition has named a strong squad to face the Fijians and fireworks are expected when the match kicks off on Saturday. The Fiji Airways drew aside plays Brisbane City at 5 p.m. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, Serpopeli Wularika represented the Fijian draw at the official launch of the NRC competition in Sydney, Australia yesterday. While the Aussie teams look forward to play the first non-Australian side to be included in the competition, teams are also thrilled about playing games in Fiji. Fiji-born Wallabies centre Samu Karevi will line up against the Fiji and Druid Ballymore on Saturday. The Vodafone Fiji Under-20 rugby team has won its first game in the World Rugby Trophy competition underway in Uruguay. The side beat Hong Kong 26 points to 7. Fiji led 7-0 at the halftime break, then scored three more in the second half, two of which were penalty tries. The Koli Sawamba coach side faces host Uruguay in its next match on Sunday. Uh, it's our job to adapt the well, and I'm really humbled and I'm really glad that the boys uh, adapted in the second half. It was really tight on the first half, as we ex expected, but uh, the boys uh, held in and they came out uh, strong. And uh, I'd like to give a round of applause to the Hong Kong team. Uh, they gave us a really good run for our money and they really taught us a lot. The Fiji Rugby Union has confirmed its participation in the 2018 Brisbane Global Rugby Tens competition. Despite only six places separating Fiji and Indonesia on the world football rankings, our Bola boys know it'll be tough playing the Asian team. The Fijians have settled in Indonesia ahead of the first ever friendly international between the two nations with a mentor positive as Bola boys have prepared well for. Chris and Rita Omano reports. The Bola boys will be venturing into unknown territory against Indonesia, something which coach Christoph Gamel is working upon. The most important is that they stay in this state of mind by keeping position, creating problems and uh, disturbing also Indonesia, which is a very good team. Fiji is using the match to better its international reputation as the team is currently ranked 181st, while the Indonesians are on 175th. To continue in our project, uh, Indonesia Tour is a step to go to uh, 2026. I need to give a big background against a big team uh, regarding uh, my youth team. For the players, it's a stepping stone towards showcasing Fijian talent on the world stage. And I guess uh, going into this match it will be an opener for most, and uh, some it will be it will be the, uh, the the first time representing the country, and I think uh, come game time the boys will give in their best. So.
The side departed yesterday and will face hosts at 9 p.m. on Saturday at the Patriot Kandrabaga Stadium in Indonesia. Chris and Rita Almanu, FBC Sports. With a week remaining for the much-talked-about test match against World Netball's fifth-ranked team, the Fiji Pearls are doing all it can to put up a good fight. Coach Vicky Wilson also has next year's Commonwealth Games in mind and says the upcoming series is an ideal opportunity to assess players. Meli Tavanga reports. The heat will be high on the Fiji Pearls lineup in their first match against South Africa. Well, uh, against South Africa, as I've said, it's going to be extremely tough. So in the midcourt, looking for those who have led us in the, in the fitness area. Hosting the top fifth ranked team in the world may be interesting to the local fans to watch. But as for the players, it will be a big challenge for them. It's going to be a great opportunity, but then again, each player must be responsible, take responsibility of themselves and making sure that they understand their role being part of uh, the final. The players need to focus on their centre pass as previously it has proved to be one of their weak areas. Unai Siroko says they need to up their game as the 2018 Commonwealth game is not too far away. This is what the girls need. I mean, they've been out for two years, so it's good for them to come back, getting exposed. The important thing is getting that match toughness that we need leading up to the Com games. The first match will be played on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. at the Vodafone Arena in Suva. Meli Tavanga, FPC Sports. With an increase in non-communicable diseases, police officers have been urged to make use of the newly refurbished gym at the Fiji Police Academy in Nasova. Over $17,000 was spent on the refurbishment of the gym. Police Commissioner Brigadier General Siti Beningiluho is hoping the officers will utilize the new facility. really needed to care more uh, for our police officers. One, they were overloaded with work and not having the right meals and also uh, physical activity. It was not an army thing that I demanded required fitness levels. Uh, it was a thing to look after their health. The Nishinu Titans rugby league team will be the team to watch as they clash against the defending champions, the Nandi Aviators, in the Vodafone Interzone competition this weekend. In a surprising twist of game structure compared to last year, the Titans have proved to be a threat in the competition. Coach Vulandakui Tonga says the key to their success in the is the constant effort to put in to strengthen its weaknesses from past matches. During our first game uh, against the uh, Ra Roosters, we planned for something and we and in fact put it into place, but it didn't work out. So we try and work from those mistakes. There are spots still available for beach volleyball teams who wish to compete at the Fiji Games, which start next Thursday. The Federation is looking at hosting 20 men's and 12 women's teams at the three-day event. Meli Tavanga reports. The Fiji Beach Volleyball Federation has circulated invitations and several teams have shown interest. We'll be having uh, four men's and four women's travelling from the west. Um, we will be paying for their affairs to come down to Suva and participate. The selectors will be scouting players at the Games for the national team which will compete in the Pacific Mini Games in Vanuatu. We will be selecting um, our final squad after these um, Fiji Games. And um, for us it's really important as well because that's the Commonwealth qualifiers as well. And if we qualify that's the first time for us um, Beach Volleyball to be represented in the uh, Commonwealth Games next year. National coach Todd Edwards says, with a limited time frame to prepare the team for Vanuatu, they've set up a program that will help new players quickly understand the game. And we're into a very rigid training schedule getting ready to go to Vanuatu in December. Really combine uh, fitness training as well as skills, drills and uh, actually playing out games. The beach volleyball competition will be held at the National Beach Courts beside the Netball Centre in Lovella Bay next Thursday. Melitavanga, FBC Sports. That's it from Sports Tonight. Join Angie later on with weather and in the world of the weird and the wonderful robot use rises in Japan. That's coming up. Radio 
na Radio Vision One na dumoy bitin na buong ni BNN. A new media, new device developed by an Israeli startup could make routine visits to the... And it's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. It was such a hot day to be exact and this hot weather will continue for a few days so ensure to stay hydrated. And of course, look for shade if you're out and about during the most hottest parts of the day. Let's take a quick look in the west. It was much more brighter with dry spells. Eastwards from Pek Harbor to Suva, it was all good and very hot. Enjoy the sun while it's around. And up in Vanua Levu, it was fairly muggy and largely very dry. Rain could be of some help right now. At sea, it still winds 20 to 25 knots with rough seas. And for the tides, high tide tomorrow morning will be at 1.35 with a low tide at 8.07. See the beauty of sunrise at 6.15. For tomorrow, sharp periods of hot weather will be around. So if you're planning to head out for a swim, do take your sunscreens along. Tomorrow's temps by in Lambasa will be quite hot at 31 degrees. And looking further on to Friday, we're expecting to have a mixed weather with lots of sunshine and few showers just to cool things off. And that's our FBC weather for tonight, Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. On VG Pulse today, we asked, should fines for overloading vehicles be increased from $1,000? Thank you. I think it shouldn't be just only monetary fund, uh, fine, but also some drastic, uh, drastic measures of about taking away the license. LTA should charge them more. And the uh, levy for trucks should go up. Well, definitely they should be charged more because they damage the road more. Overloading is not very good, you know, for our roads. It should be less. Because asking everyone struggle, eh? That's fine. Because asking paying the road levy to LTE should fix the thing. Recapping the main stories, businesses accused of defrauding the government, youngsters warned about human rights violation, and Kandavu worried about non-savings by young generation. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question this week, we are asking, will cheaper flights increase connectivity between Viti Levu and Vanua Levu? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day, beautiful sunset captured by Shiny Achand at Koro Diri Diri in Nausori. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was the FBC News for tonight from the team and I, night. Radio Fiji One and Radio Fiji One.